We're absolutely excited beyond belief that the people of the 7th District would put their trust in us, uh, that the people of the 7th District care about pro-life, they care about the homeschoolers, they care about not having a state income tax. State Representative Matthew Hill of Jonesboro spoke those words in 2004 after his first primary win in Tennessee's 7th District. When you step on this House floor and you represent your people, don't take it for granted. Eight Termer Hill spoke these words on the State House floor this month after an August 6th primary shellacking at the hands of political newcomer Becky Alexander. Just 18 months earlier, Hill had been flying high as deputy speaker, but some local leaders say a penchant for Nashville politics and support for local initiatives that was transactional at best and absent at worst left him with thin support. Jonesboro Mayor Chuck Vest, whose political career has tracked closely with Hill's, remembers Hill being responsive but unable to deliver the goods on a town infrastructure need early in his career. I don't necessarily think it's because maybe he didn't make the effort, but he was still pretty new in Nashville at that time. And I think at some point we realized that he wasn't going to be able to help us get the funding from the state to improve our wastewater system. Vest said after Hill gained greater stature in Nashville, his focus on state politics left town leaders feeling like they were playing second fiddle when they sought help. We needed help here in our community, and I think that became less of a focus for him, which led to the failure to return phone calls, failure to return emails, and there's no results. When the 25-year-old Hill swept into office, several area Republicans, including his opponent, Bob Patton, were ousted after voting for a state income tax. Hill's early support came largely from outside donors and political action committees. That pattern persisted through his tenure, and the woman who ran Alexander's campaign this year said it left him vulnerable to a strong challenger. I've never seen a lot of grassroots. Um, I think he just had a lot of quiet support. Steeped in a Christian radio upbringing, Hill found early support from the Gregory family and PACs they were involved in. The owners of King Pharmaceuticals, the Gregory's supported numerous Christian conservative candidates. Those beneficiaries tended to rally to hot-button conservative issues such as pro-life, and also what area teacher Janae Peters said was outsized support for homeschooling and antagonism toward public educators. In 2011, he helped lead the charge to take our bargaining rights away. So from the very beginning, there were issues between local area teachers and Matthew Hill. That would eventually change, then change again. But before it did, Hill was building power in the halls of the Capitol, former AP reporter Eric Schelzig says. He definitely was, uh, you know, figured out a lot of the, the, the gears and the machinery of, of power within the building. Uh, and there is a lot of, you know, arcane parliamentary tricks that, that, that can be used to your advantage. So if they're not on the list and the question is called, then we can't request a roll call vote? If you're not recognized, no. You, that's the purpose of chairing the meeting is to recognize folks. As the chair, you have to recognize us. You cannot just tune us out and I'll bring no, you I something. No, I understand that, but for the question that Representative Parkinson had specifically to Chairman Carr, Chairman Carr even asked if anybody else was on the list and there was no one on the list and nobody raised their hand. So it was completely in order. Remember one year at 2008 or so, uh, Matthew Hill tried to amend a, a bill that had to do with sewage systems to also allow employers to require their workers to speak English. Um, there was a big fight on the floor. Uh, it got defeated along party lines. Um, and, you know, it was sort of a, a sign of things to come. And the bill has an amendment. Do we have a motion on the bill? Hill added a built-in voting block when his brother Timothy and longtime friend Micah Van Huss were elected to the 3rd and 6th district seats in 2012. Van Huss beat incumbent Dale Ford in the primary. The legislator, Vest, said, had helped Jonesboro with that infrastructure need after Matthew Hill couldn't. By 2012, Vest said the town had adjusted its approach to issues involving the state. Matthew has always been cordial with me and I with him, but I think at some point we realized that there really wasn't any interest on his part to really help the town of Jonesboro in any meaningful way. And we just, we tried to really work with Rusty Crow and other state officials. Meanwhile, Hill was gaining his first committee chairmanship under Speaker Beth Harwell, helped by the new influence that came along with having a brother and a friend at his side in Nashville. And that sort of changed, uh, helped change the tenor there because he had a built-in block at the legislature to sort of start uh, sort of plotting 
uh, more influence for, for himself and his, and, his, and his colleagues. He did, we had a lot of influence with a very uh, conservative, you know, the most conservative faction within the Republican caucus. But Hill's first power position was short-lived. Uh, unfortunately for him, he ran afoul of then Speaker Harwell uh, when he cast a key vote against allowing one supermarkets. All in favor of House Bill 610 going to finance ways and means, signify by saying aye. Chairman Hill. No. The bill fails. His vote caught everyone off guard and everyone was upset. And as a consequence, he was uh, thrown out as chairman of that committee. A year later, Hill and Van Hus both faced serious primary challenges in the 2014 election. And Hill met with area teachers, forging an alliance Peters said she knew was transactional. And we just felt like um, that it would probably be in the best interest uh, of us locally in our classrooms to support him, which we did. Lots of local teachers gave up days of their summer to campaign for him. He thanked the teachers and gave them credit for pushing him over the edge to the win. And to his credit, years after that, he did, um, I mean, he did support legislation that was classroom friendly. Hill also found his political fortunes in Nashville resurrected after Harwell retired and ally Glenn Cassida ascended to the speakership. State Representative Matthew Hill of Jonesboro will be appointed to a new post. Hill will serve as the deputy speaker. Of uh, that really indicated the big uh, move of uh, growth and influence for both Matthew, Timothy, and also uh, Micah Van Hus. Hill had consistently delivered a block of a dozen or more conservative votes in what Shelzig said is a fractious caucus. Both Hills and Van Hus gained committee chairmanships as well. Uh, he was considered the enforcer, uh, and he was in charge of the rules and in sort of shutting down dissent wherever it was to be found. Cassidy's speakership crashed down in scandal within months. Hill made his own bid for speaker, even lavishing checks on a couple dozen Republican lawmakers. The checks came from a PAC run by Timothy Hill with money from developers who had seen Hill successfully push legislation creating a tax incentive zone in Boone's Creek. It was the kind of politics Vest and Shell say they'd become familiar with from Matthew Hill. I think the political part was the larger portion. Um, about holding on to what we've got, keeping our position, climbing whatever. And I think over the years people realized that Matthew was more in Nashville for himself with some of the things that came up with campaign donations and, and some of those things trying to get more power down there. That seemed to be the focus. All the efforts weren't enough to keep Cameron Sexton from winning the speakership and appointing runner-up Curtis Johnson as his deputy. The heavy-handed leadership approach that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way was you know, right, right in, in, in Hill's wheelhouse, and a lot of people were still angry about him for it. Hill hadn't just burned bridges with colleagues. After siding with public school teachers and voting no on school voucher legislation, Hill changed course after Governor Bill Lee took office in 2019. Peters said Hill told teachers the effort was going to pass easily and that a yes vote was actually in their interest. And if I vote against it, then I'm not going to have any say-so in the rollout of the legislation. So I need to vote yes so I can protect Washington County. That was you know, that was his argument. Teachers knew better, Peters said. And my response was, I don't understand how it's going to uh, pass by large margins when the chair, at the time, the chair of the Republican caucus, who's now the Speaker of the House, did not support it. Ladies and gentlemen, with this legislation, Governor Lee is partnering with us in the legislature and with our leadership to lead the effort after listening to our teachers. The bill passed by the slimmest of margins with 23 Republicans joining 25 Democrats in opposition. In Peters' mind, it exemplified the political approach of Hill, who had backed a Lee opponent in the 2018 Republican gubernatorial primary. He was more interested in playing politics uh, in Nashville, incurring favor with the governor and, and making a bid for the speakership. Uh, those were the things that interest him. He was not interested in the issues that he, his constituents had here at home. Peters said teachers may have been the final nail in Hill's coffin, but she, Shelzig, and Shell agree the ousting was related to his overall body of work and his approach. But yeah, he collected more baggage um, the past couple of years, and that didn't, that didn't help him at all. As a serious challenge took shape in 2020, Hill stuck to the playbook. There's a group of individuals that are trying to use their millions of dollars to influence this election to try to silence the Christian conservative voice 
that we take to Nashville. We sort of gave opponents a lot, more, a lot of time to dig in and to expose things that for some appeared unseemly to some. Uh, and maybe I think in retrospect, he might've been flying too close to the sun there on, in a speaker's bid because it gave a lot of ammunition to his opponents. Uh, and they came home to roost when he was running for reelection. Mayor Vest said he hopes for a markedly different town representative relationship starting when the legislature convenes in January. We're a small town that tries to do big things. And we feel like with Rebecca Alexander, she's somebody that's gonna be more focused on the constituents here locally, more so than improving her position in Nashville. Peters said August's primary result shows power still rests with the voters. Uh, Nashville politics should not drive policy and law. It should be driven by the needs and the values of the people in the communities and through the people that they elect. But when these lawmakers, these local lawmakers, choose to uh, play Nashville politics rather than represent us, then it's our job to organize and elect better people that represent us. Matthew Hill declined an opportunity to speak with News Channel 11 for this story. In Johnson City, Jeff Keeling.